This week, we have DJ producer So Shui joining us all the way from the mother city, Cape Town. So Shui, how are you doing? Um, I lost you a bit there on the audio. What did you say? I'm very good. How are you? I can't complain. Thanks. Let me just start off by saying thank you so much for taking time out out of your busy schedule to sit down with us and ask you a few questions that I'm sure will benefit myself as well as our listeners. Awesome, man. Yeah, thanks for thanks for having me on your, your show. Can't wait. Awesome, man. Okay, guys. So to all of those listening, if you guys at any moment within this um, live interview have any questions, please do just tap on the question mark at the bottom of the screen right next to the comments box. In there, you can leave a question. If it pops up, we can also sway what the, uh, about the question and hopefully you can inform us a bit more about what you'd like to know. Okay, so, uh, so Shwe, I'd just like to start the show off by having you tell the audience a bit about yourself, how old you are, where you're from, and, um, you know, a bit more a bit more about why you started DJ. Okay, cool, man. Yeah, so I'm 28 this year, and I was born and raised in Johannesburg. <clears throat> um, recently moved to Cape Town. Um, I made the move to Cape Town about four years ago, four or five years ago. I uh, decided to move down to Cape Town and just try something new with my life. I tried, you know, to just be an adventurer and see what's out there for me. So yeah, that, that happened to me and it happened to my music as well. It, it spilled into my music. So um, yeah, with regards to how I got into the music and stuff. So I went to a DJ school called Retro Music back in 2011 and that's where I met this guy called Kiva and he was basically the guy that taught me how to DJ at the time in 2011 and he also, um, he was the guy that got me into music production because he always played me his music, his sounds and stuff and he then gave me Cubase at the time. Okay. So from there, I went for like four or five sessions. He just taught me a little bit about, you know, the basics of music, you know, like drum patterning and stuff like that. From there, I got really into it. And then I started playing around with my own um, doors, so my own workstations. And I got Fruity Loops. I played around with Fruity Loops at the time. And then I got into Reason after that because I didn't like Fruity too much. Reason was a little bit complicated. And then I got back into Cubase. Once I got back into Cubase, I wanted, I was like thirsty for more knowledge. And I went to a mixing engineer, which then showed me another few tips and tricks, another three, four sessions for that as well. And um, yeah, from there, I've just been bouncing around from a lot of videos and stuff, asking people and basically taught myself how to create music within Cubase. So as soon as I got my station working and, and people showed me how to use Cubase, then I was able to sort of propel within, within that space. And yeah, that has led me to where I am today. All right, awesome stuff, man. So from the word go, basically, you knew you didn't want to just be a DJ playing other people's music. You knew that you wanted to start with a bit of production and have your own identity within the music scene. Yeah, I would definitely say so. Um, I, as soon as I started, this is actually funny because as soon as I started DJing, I thought it was going to be this DJ for a year and then it's going to take off, you know, Hmm. you always imagine you're going to be like the next David Guetta yeah, and but, but you, you see that doesn't actually it doesn't happen eh? like <laughs> life hits you and yeah from there once I saw the impact of making your own productions and what it could mean for your career that's when I was, that's when, when I basically jumped for that opportunity and definitely saw that gap and I utilized that opportunity to then create my own music create my own sound and basically just create my own uniqueness in this world of, of this, of the music industry. No, oh, definitely. And uh, uniqueness is what this industry is all about, you know? Um, so tell me, so Shway, let's tell our listeners a bit, what is your genre of choice? What is it that you go for when making music? Genre is, uh, genre has always been a tough one. Um, simply because there's so many genres out there and sometimes it's hard to pinpoint exactly what, what my sound is. What I can say is that the characteristics around it definitely involves a lot of bass. So if I had to classify and I had to put or place myself or my music into a genre, I would definitely say that it's bass house. Um, 
as I've said before, some people like in Brazil, they would actually call it low base. Okay. And when you go to America or even uh, in the in Australia, they would probably call it something like tech house or some deep house. It depends on who you speak to. So it's all about perspective of people, but it's very bass driven music. I think that's what my music is all about. All right. Okay. Cool, man. And um, when it comes to when it comes to performing live sets, what would you say? really stands out within your set and not only your songs. Sorry, would you just repeat that again? So the question is, um, when you perform in a live set, what would you say is distinctive in your sets? What, what would you use from other people's songs? Like what would it take for you to use someone else's song in your set? What would you be looking for? Mm. Mm. Good question. Um, I really enjoy a lot of vocal stuff. Mm -hmm. So if a track has got a great, either a, mo a vocal melody to it, or it's got some sort of vocal um, hook that drives the track, then I typically love including those sort of tracks. With having the vocal there as like the hook or the catch of the song, which is, I, I don't know, it just catches me all the time. With a nice bass line at the bottom, I just enjoy that. So if it's a driving bass with a vocal on top, I mean, I'm in love with that sort of stuff. It's like, you can almost like hum or sing along in a way, not in a cheesy way or like a poppy way, but like in a groovy way. And you, yeah. the bass has you moving at the bottom, which I think is super fun. Yeah. Awesome, so yeah. always when I look out for other tracks, if there's a vocal, they've got me. And if it's got a nice bass, it's in my set. All right, cool. And it's, it's very similar to what you produce yourself. We've heard a lot of your productions are vocal based. Um, so definitely it does make sense. Um, so, so Shway, the next question is, I'm going to split it into two ways. I'm going to ask you, what is your biggest achievement? Firstly, with regards to production, um, who you've worked with or a song that's really taken off. And the second part would be, what's your biggest achievement with regards to where you've played? Okay, I'll start with the DJ question. So that one to me is quite straightforward. The, locally, I, I played Truth um, the first time about two years ago, I think, or two or three years ago. I think it was in 2016, I played my first Truth event. So for the, those that don't know, Truth is in, in Johannesburg, Midrand, closing down this year, unfortunately. But um, yeah, I was able to play my first gig there. I, I've always aspired as, you know, an upcoming new DJ. Yeah. That that is the place you want to be at. That's the place you want to play. That's where you get the respect. That's where you can play just your your music, your type of music, and people will go ballistic and love it. Yeah, so the culture there is amazing. So that would be locally for me something that I've been aspiring to for years, and then I finally got that opportunity um, two three years ago. And then on a on an international scene, I also feel like I've I've got a, a an accomplishment there where I've been to Germany. And I played two gigs there. So it was like a mini tour for me. Mm -hmm. um, I actually played three gigs yeah, in Germany. So that is also to me quite big, being able to say that I've done something internationally as well. And I was asked to play in, in Germany. That was, that was lots of fun. And then uh, sorry, your before, other question. Before you jump onto the production, I just want to ask, what was the, what was the German response to your set? Yeah, uh, that's also a great question because Germany... Well, when I was in Germany, they like our, our type of music, but it's not, it's not sort of like mainstream there yet. Like people enjoy what I've seen from the other sets, from the other DJs. They enjoy more like techy, mm -hmm. um, almost techno sort of vibe. So when I came on, it was like, you know, they, they sort of don't know what's going on, what's hitting them. Yeah, something new, yeah. But yeah, it's something new. So they're like, we don't know, but they're jamming, but it wasn't a, a complete like, um, you know, like the, where you see the crowd go wild for your music. It's not that sort of response. So it wasn't completely amazing, but I think we, we made an impact. Um, we also sort of educated them on what we play in South Africa. So I think the market for our type of music is still small um, in Germany, but the guy who brought me over loves what South Africa does and he's trying to push our sort of music on that side. Yeah, awesome. And hopefully it will get there within time. Yeah. Okay, well, production. And, oh, so your other one was production. Hmm. Um, so for production, I think my biggest one, my biggest accomplishment in my own opinion would be Box of Cats and mainly because they are in line exactly with what I do, what I believe in, what I make. Um, they sign the type of checks that I want to include in my sets. So the entire vibe 
their their humor, their brand is like in line with what I do. And they've got big artists that sit on top of that of that label of that brand. So for me, signing with the label <clears throat> with such a big reputation is just huge in my eyes. I've also signed to other labels, but that's the one that I feel most like um, accomplished with. Okay, cool. And um, would you mind telling us what track it was that was signed to that label? So the first the first track that I signed with them, it was also about a year, a little bit longer than a year ago, and it was called Love the Way. That was the first one. So if anyone wants to check that out, it's called So Shui and then obviously um, Love the Way Original Mix. Um, it was part of a compilation, I think, at the time. So that was the first time that I featured with them. And then recently, just a few months ago, I signed another one with them, um, fortunately. And it was with Edson Bioli. It's a Brazilian artist. We, we signed together and we, we, we collabed together and we signed that together as a track and got onto onto another compilation. Yeah. Awesome, man. I've, I've actually heard that track and that song. It, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a bang. <laughs> really, it is. Thanks, man. <laughs> um, guys, just a note to those of you who just pulled in, we are busy interviewing So Shui from Cape Town. If you guys do have any questions at any moment in time, please just do drop it down next to the comments in the question box, and I'll be sure to ask um, So Shui any questions that you guys have got. Um, so, so Shui, we're going to move a bit more to producing now. So the first question I want to ask you is, you, you touched on producing a bit earlier, um, but my question to you is, what is your door of choice? I think you did cover it a bit just now. And would you recommend a specific door to first two guys to starting out? <clears throat> okay, so for, for those that don't know, um, I'll just state it out, is I use Cubase. That's my door of preference, if you don't know by now. I am in love with, this, with the Steinberg uh, product line, so I enjoy Cubase as my preference for working station. And yeah, with my recommendation to other producers starting out, I would definitely say that you don't need to follow my way and go on Cubase or feel you need a specific door to be a success. I would definitely say that you can find the door that works for you. So if you feel comfortable with a with a door, you can then use it. Or if you feel like you are attracted to it or you just understand it, Mm -hmm. um intelligent you know like from an intelligent perspective you can just grasp it quicker then that's the one you go with like don't try to think there's only one that will make you successful you go for the one that that you love yeah definitely a bit of experimenting in the early stages and then you know just from there just stick it out okay so yeah. we have our first question yeah um the question is would you ever play an afro tech inspired set <laughs> uh <laughs> i I don't know what that means, but I, I listened to Watson's set today and it also, it, it had the caption of African tech inspired set, exactly what that question is about now. And I, and I had no idea what it is, but the set was sick. Like the set was, had amazing tracks. Although I don't know if it was African tech, but if that's the type of music that is African tech or whatever it's called, I would definitely play that, that type of music. Although I've been looking into some um, African uh, like inspiration almost mm -hmm. where I try and draw some of their drum techniques for my own tracks because it's got a lot of groove and shuffle. So I just enjoy that a lot. Awesome, man. Yeah, okay. I hope that answered the question. Um, so Shway, tell us, do you have any productions that are in the pipeline that you'll be releasing soon? Yes, I do. So for anyone that's going to listen to this mix after the interview or that has listened to the mix when it was uploaded, uh, if, you, if you go, if you listen it from the start, but you get to the end, you'll see that the last track that I include, which I end the mix with, is actually a new track of mine that's not released yet. And it's called Hump Back. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a brand new one that hasn't been released anywhere. I'm not sure when it releases. It's still like unsigned. Um, so that's one. And then the second, which I didn't put into this mix because the album is releasing this Friday. I, I did another track with Armanji Bad. So for those that don't know him, he's, a, he's quite a big vocalist in South Africa. Um, doing quite well for himself as well. I've collabed with him before. So he is on my, like, um, part of my post or my, my previous productions. So I've done another track with him. His track is coming, or his album actually is coming out this coming Friday. And I'm on that album. 
So we did a track together. I wrote a nice track for him. He sang on top of it. And yeah, that's coming out. So we didn't want to put in any spoiler alerts. And therefore, you'll, you'll only find that after this Friday. Awesome, man. I can't wait to hear that song. So, so <laughs> Shrey, um, you, just, you just touched on collabs now with your, your, your latest collab being with Armand Bear. Tell me, um, what would your dream collab be? Who, who would you like to sit down with and just make a song with? So for anyone that has been following me for quite a while, you'll know that I'm a Carl Watson lover. Like I'm an enthusiast. I'm just like, he's my inspiration. So <clears throat> having said that, that's going to be the obvious guy from a local perspective that I would love to just sit with in the studio and get something done with the guy. Um, I'm also in the process with other guys uh, doing collabs locally. But yeah, I won't mention that now, but we'll, we'll, we'll chat about that at some other time. And then from an international perspective, there's also some people that I'd love to, to work with. So okay. definitely one of the guys is that I can think of from the top of my mind is Rotic. He's from Brazil. We actually did a collab a few, a few years ago. It was, I think, also that, that time that I played Truth. Um, I actually opened for, for Rotic. And at that time, we, we started a track. And we never finished it. So I'd love to just get in touch with him again at some point and see if we can get that collab going again. And then there's another guy from the US and his name is Sammy Legs. Um, he's, he's bringing out, like he's a newcomer, but he's bringing out such groovy tracks. that okay. He's got a lot of um, uniqueness to his sound. Like he, he doesn't sound like anyone else. And he, he uses very cool techniques and effects that I'm like in love with. And he, he's, his music has just been, yeah, sort of impacting me and inspiring me to, to just um, be a part of. So I'd love to collab with him as well. Awesome, man. And I would, I would love to hear you and Rotic meet up again and you know, get, get done with that track. And, um, you know, you should probably jump on that uh, American boy as well now while he's starting out. <laughs> yeah. Get, get a collab going there as I well. I get a chance. <laughs> I think that would really, really be pretty cool. So, um, so sure, I'm just going to end off the, the interview by asking you a question. And this question is, is there any advice that you would give to any DJs, producers, artists trying to make their way in, in, this, in this scene? Yeah, so I guess for, for any upcoming producer, what I would usually say, and I've been sticking to this all the time, is if you are new to this scene if you are new to music production or if you are completely a newbie to what we currently do then i would definitely suggest that you you do as much as you can within a door so what i'm saying is you got to find the application that works for you so you've got to find a cubase or you've got to find a fruity loop somewhere and you've got to own that shit so you got to go and teach yourself or get lessons or something to know how that application works so then when you have a sound in your mind, you can get to that desi desired sound as fast as possible, right? Yeah. So that's the one thing is getting to know the, the place that you work in. That's the main thing you want to do first. Get to know your tools. And then second that piece of advice, and this is very simple tips, but I think it's, it's overlooked. Second thing you, that I would always suggest to upcoming producers is to make as many tracks as you possibly can. Mm. Because... If you can push out as many tracks as you can, you learn a lot along the way instead of just trying to focus on like one specific track and trying to finish it and make it, you know, perfect and you polish it out. It doesn't like, it's not going to be a, a banger the first time, you know, especially if you're new. So definitely go try an all round type of approach and do as many tracks as you can. So you can actually elevate your learning and elevate your, your understanding of music and train your ears. That's another thing. So yeah, that's my, that's my advice. Awesome, man. Yeah, so definitely a lot of trial and error, you know, not just trying to get the one hit wonder, if you can call it that. Mm -hmm. um, so, Shway, I want to thank you for sitting down with us. I know you have a busy schedule. We really appreciate you sending your mix to us. We appreciate you taking time out, just sitting with us, answering a few of our questions. You taught me a lot. I'm sure you taught our listeners a lot as well. Um, we're really privileged to have you on our show. We're looking forward to your releases. Um, I'm sure there are still big things to come. And uh, yeah, just thanks for sitting with us. Thank you very much for having me on the show. I think this show is going to go places. And yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys do in the future. I mean, this is a great platform that you guys are building. 
especially for upcoming artists and just the music scene in general. Like you guys are just building this group for people to be supported, you know? Um, so yeah, I would just want to honor you guys for that. And thank you again for having me on the show. Awesome, man. Thank you. We really appreciate those kind words. It's real nice coming from you. Um, everyone, just um, before we all leave, next week will be our same time, same place. Next week, we'll have DJ producer, Victoria based Warren Shanti. You'll be providing us with next week's mix, and then we'll have exclusive one-on-one -on -one with him as well. We'll see you all next week. So, Shway, we will talk to you soon. Everyone, have a good evening. Cool, man. Okay, cheers. cheers man. Bye. You're listening to The Groove. Festivals for You weekly podcast where we bring the underground music scene to you. Brought to you by your host G-Cord. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening and welcome to our second installment of The Groove. We have a super special show lined up for you guys this week. It is our official first guest artist. Heading all the way from Cape Town, producer DJ So Shui will be supplying us with a vibe for the next 30 minutes. He will be starting his mix off with We by Marava followed by Matives and their track called ID. Chooch will be after that with Flipping the Bird. And just after that, we'll have two of Soshway's songs called Halfway and Medusa, Peace of My Heart, Feed Good Boys, the Soshway remix. Let's get into it.
down, down, down. Da 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 The groove. We just listened to So Sway's remix of Medusa, Peace of My Heart. Next up, we'll have Hot Neck Can't Remember the Rotic remix, directly followed by Raven and Pilo coming back. After that, we'll have Dust Capital and Rotic with Work, followed by Edson Fayoli and his collab with So Sway called Rise. Directly after that, we'll have Sammy Legs, Do It Like This, and after that, we'll have Awareness. By Mirabba. Now you're coming back, now you're coming back, now 
You know what I'm about to do when I get my hands on you. I wanna see your work. Don't be scared, just improvise. Show me your deepest desire. It's not work, 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 work. Thank you.
You're in the groove. What a power set for my boy all the way from Cape Town, So Shui, bringing a lot of his own productions forward accompanied by some good hair raising tunes. We just listened to Humpback and Can't Get Over You, both of these tunes belonging to the man himself. Before that we had Mareva with Awareness and Sammy Legs' Don't Do It Like This. In closing, I would just like to mention to all of our listeners that we do have an online merchandise store where you can find plenty of cool merch to rock your next door with. Be sure to check out our merchandise at www.festivalsforyou.ca.za or via Instagram under our stores. Thank you all so much for tuning in and be sure to join our live interview at quarter past seven where we will get to sit down with So Shui and get to know him a little bit better as an artist. See all you beautiful peeps next week.